absolutely scandalous that three quarters of the applications now being is now being refused. It's the highest it's ever been and getting worse. This is leading to delay and increased costs as threatening the government's renewable targets of 10% by 2010, 15% by 2020. Indeed, the Climate Change Audit Committee has now called for that commitment to be increased by 30% by 2020. The challenge is therefore to unlock the local decision-making process. Again, the report shows that in a study of 44 appeals between 2006 and 2009, which were recommended by the planning officer to be accepted, were rejected by the planning committee councillors. Yet 30% of those, when considered, 70% uh, of those, when we considered an appeal, were granted, supporting the planning officer's decisions. Some would say that it's a clear indication of conflict between the democratic mandate of the councillors and the national and global policy, and it's a fair point to make. But it's a stark example of this was to be seen in the Isle of Wight Planning Committee recently, which allowed the closure of a wind turbine manufacturer on an island, causing 600 redundancies. The company refused any government assistance that encouraged the company to stay here and produce these wind turbines and their argument was that the three applications by the local authority for wind farms have been turned down and it has the damn cheek to call itself an eco island. What about the thorniest issue of all, the siting of the wind farms? When I was the Deputy Prime Minister with the responsibility for planning decisions, I faced similar problems with travellers looking for suitable sites to settle. What would normally happen is they would choose the site by themselves, pitch it up, claim it was violating, violating their human rights if they were moved on. Conflict was rife, the sites were often unsuitable, and so it went back and forth between the travellers and the council. So I made local authorities assign sites within their plans which travellers could use. That made it more strategic, far more harmonious, and far more convenient to all concerned. The travellers had a site, the council had proactively located a place that was at least inconvenient to them and their constituents. We should bring this approach to wind farms. We've already know that the best areas are for wind. Let's work with the councils to ensure they are ideal, suitable areas for development. The Committee on Climate Change only said last week that we need radical action at home to meet our energy targets, proposing we build 8,000 new wind turbines. We cannot let the vocal minority stop our move to the essential carbon economy and stop us meeting our global and emission targets. We cannot let professional consultants stop, up, uh, stop us combating rising sea levels, melting ice caps and extreme weather events. And we cannot let the squires and the gentry stop us meeting our moral obligation to pass this world on to in a better state to our children and our children's children. They've had it their way for far too long. So let me tell them loud and clear, it's not your backyard anymore, it's ours. <laughs>